more sports. Legion of friends for his retirement. The uh, club uh, came up with uh, a very nice gesture. And Robbo was saluted by the crowd, driven around, played over 200 games, started playing with the club 11 years ago. And a good salute to a former very, very uh, popular player here with the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. The referee swinging the arms around there, Mick Stone. Manly running from right to left. Canterbury won the toss, I'm advised, and uh, elected to run into the breeze in the first half. Although it may well go around to uh, another area before the end of this game, but at the moment it apparently is favouring Manly slightly. They're running from right to left. Graham Hughes on the sideline. Yeah, slightly favouring Manly, more or less a cross breeze. Uh, should fa uh, favour both sides throughout the match. Of course, they'll be kicking for this uh, near side grandstand touchline. OK, the first man to receive the ball was Farrow. Now it's the uh, Canterbury side running from left to right in their blue uniform against Manly in their maroon and white. Canterbury will be... Uh, unquestionably trying to soften Manly up in the forwards. They've got the firepower to do it. Bugden fires a pass out to Tunks. He's driven backwards. The pass was ruled forward by Mr Stone. It's been a line ball decision. It'll give Manly an opportunity, should they win the scrum, to be in a good attacking position. Lyons, with the ball at the moment, comes in at lock forward. He's in number 19. Vorton's still in number 8, and the captain has moved into the second row. Hazlitt a feed for Manly. Just outside the Canterbury quarter. Penalty to Manly. Differential. The signal is that Canterbury weren't packing square on, packing with their front row aiming towards the sideline. Daryl Williams to take the kick for touch. A good crowd in attendance. Graham Hughes is an expert on Belmore Oval. His uh, opinion of the crowd? I would suggest uh, getting up to around 14,000. Okay, here's. Uh, Manly now on the boil with Daly standing at a tackle about 10 metres out from the line and trying to get his arms free, but no way he was going to do that. Cochran at dummy half. Hasler to broken share and he's unseated unceremoniously, lost the ball on the tackle. You'll remember that one, it came in very strongly from Langmack. And there's a penalty against Manly for being well and truly inside the five. A little bit of restlessness here, obviously a bit of feeling. Lyons is a player that Manly need to keep well and truly under control. He does incline, in my view, to be a little bit uh, hyperactive. And uh, he's a player that can concede the odd penalty. Farrah kicking for touch. It's a beautiful torpedo punt. And quite a decent one. We didn't have anyone in the crowd to catch it. A gain of about 18 metres from where he took it. Pat Jarvis. First time in first grade this year for Canterbury, formerly with St George. Bugden away to Tunks. In my view, the uh, most uh, constructive front row forward going around in Sydney Rugby League at the moment. Farrah elects to get it downfield. It's gone over Williams' head. Nice bounce for him. Takes it on the first bounce. There's plenty of chases. And back he's driven. Two mighty head-on tackles have taken place. Broken shear. A few seconds ago, and uh, that's three then in the space of about 30 seconds. Canterbury all fired up to really sicken the Manly uh, side legitimately. Manly are making very heavy weather of getting away from here. Daly trying to go through the meat of the ruck and gets a, get a few yards. He's just inside his quarter. Cochran, Gibbs, picked off beautifully. Steve Mortimer with a boot top tackle right round. And Manly have gone nowhere in five tackles. Back to Williams. Gets his kick hurriedly down there. Oh, it's got a nasty bounce there on the occasion for Glenn Friendo, but he's picked it up back near his quarter line. Close as there. O'Connor was over the top. In comes Sandy Campbell from the left wing to uh, take some of the pressure off his forwards. They're back towards the halfway line. Bugden fires it out to Jarvis. Big knee action. Gets him up as high as the Harbour Bridge. Potter. One of the very much informed players, Tux, who's famous for being able to get uh, that ball away one-handed. Reverse or, or forward to Lamb. There was a continuation of the tackle and, and uh, Gibbs has uh, backed into him. There was a knock on there. That'll be ruled on. Lamb, I was just watching the play back there with Gibbs and Lamb. No touch judges come on. But uh, I think that Gibbs was probably in full flight going into Lamb backwards try to block the kick and knock Lamb out of the way. Now this scrum of critical one for Manly. Pressure that, uh, from an unforced error. 
in and out. That'll be a penalty against Hasler. He came dancing around there like one of the Borovansky ballet. He knew he was offside. Uh, there's a penalty kick at goal now for uh, Canterbury. Very cute play by Steve Mortimer. Didn't wait for the Manly players to go back the required distance. Immediately tapped the ball, ran straight at him, copped him inside the uh, the 10 metres. They've attacked, attempted to tackle him, and he's earned a penalty in a very adjacent position. And there's the head-on replay. Takes the quick tap. That's the State Bank replay we're talking about. Both those players well inside. Lamb, 11 goals already in 87. Moves in now, three pace run, strikes it very well, there's the first blood to Canterbury and they lead by two points to nil. Interesting to note the other games too, the under 23s went to the Manly Warringah side by 16 to 12 and in an absolute cliffhanger. The Canterbury side won the reserve rate 9 to 8 with a field goal virtually as the bell was ringing. They were level at 8 all. Friendo. 9 8 was the score in that uh, reserve grade game. Canterbury 9, Manly Boringa 8. Field goal right in the dying stages. Bugden runs from dummy half. Just outside their quarter. Tunks. Watch for the one-arm passes from time to time. He's a master at it. As soon as the play settles down, Mortimer running from dummy half. He's taken out by the marker, Daly. Buckton fires it back to Farrah. Farrah's kick goes off the side of his foot, but it's still going to be a beauty. It's a gain of about 38 metres there. Steve Park given absolutely no chance. There's the kick. Park uh, well, uh, not out of position, just totally beaten for the uh, trajectory of the ball. Again, the pressure on Manly, territorially, but they have the feed this time. Hasler's got it at the back of the scrum. Around came Lamb very quickly with Langhoff. Lyons, strong player, gets to the quarter. A little bit of lashing of the feet there. Broken share. Making up for the loss of the ball the first time he touched it. Held on grimly. Cochran. Daly up in the air and backslammed hard. Spectacular stuff from the Canterbury forwards moving in there. Back to Williams who takes a time to kick again. Nearly has that kick charged down. That's going to be a very good kick. It had uh, a very acute angle at the end of it. Sharp uh, break to the left and over the sideline. Williams does seem to me to take much too long. He allows the defence to come up too close to them. There'll be the occasion in this match where he'll wait just a fraction too long and somebody will deflect the kick. Canterbury ball. Farrah playing in a 5-8 role there on that occasion. Potter. Lamb. Gibbs the tackler. They're working it up towards half bait. Buckton gets a pass away. It's gone to ground and the referee has ruled against Manly being inside the five on the blind side out there. Well, that breeze, I think, uh, as Graham suggested, is blowing virtually a cross field. Now it doesn't appear to, according to the flags, doesn't appear to be favouring either side, just blowing directly across the field. Farrah kicking straight into it there. Still not a bad kick. A gain of about 15 metres from the middle of the field is always very acceptable. Bugden. Mortimer. Lamb. Hagen. Vorton the tackle with Hasler. Lamb again. Lang Mack. Loses his footing. Midway between the Manly quarter and halfway. Steve Mortimer. Farrah. Goes round one defender. Very strong player, not the fastest player in, in the backs in Sydney by any means, there's a penalty. It's taken uh, Meredith a, a dog's age to get off him and Meredith uh, again has been uh, guilty of that on several occasions with different referees. Just doesn't leave well enough alone, tackle had been called obviously. There he is still on the top. 
Farrell elects to kick for touch there about uh, well about 15 metres out that's four straight penalties to Canterbury at the moment Canterbury four Manly one in the penalty count Mortimer dummy half works it to the blind way Langmack upended here and pushed to, desperately close to the sideline by Lyons Frendo Mortimer Folks standing as a sort of a second 5-8 there Hagen Steve Mortimer Lamb cut out pass through to Potter Potter away to Hagen Hagen dummies tries to get round his man can't do that the defence too strong 15 metres out still Potter comes through gets a pass away nicely there to Jarvis he's upended about 8 metres out Mortimer screeching for it onto Lamb there's the grubber kick through it's going to be an interesting one no just a bit too tough bit too hard went straight over the dead ball line so that'll be a, line, a restart from the Manly quarter Canterbury banks down two Manly nil in first grade Lamb has kicked a penalty go Daly on the swivel there the looking Manly will be to Cochrane running a bit from dummy half to break it up there's a pass to Gibbs Gibbs has put it down Mortimer picks up the dregs gets it away to Farrell they're going up the blind side strong defence out there is still not unseated Farrow he's finally put down he dispossessed himself of Hasler pretty easily there now to Mortimer Mortimer a pass on to Folks trying to fit him into a gap there smart play by Folks Bugden Langmack the dummy he's tackled 10 metres out from the Manly line continual pressure now coming on Manly Potter at dummy half Mortimer Lamb Lamb tries to go around his man can't do that it was murder. Well, there's a double knock on. Either way, the referee will have to rule on that. The first knock on coming from Canterbury Bankstown. That's out the Manly side. Gives it straight to Williams, the fullback, who's running a cross field. He evades one tackle. Now tries to straighten. Lang Max there. No way. Vorton trying to pump it up close to the ruck. And these formidable Canterbury forwards keep coming in ones and twos and threes. There's a penalty against them. Brokenshire running wide of the ruck there. A little bit of stupidity there by Gillespie knocking the ball out of Brokenshire's hands. That's uh, a penalty offence. Referee didn't see it. Gerald Williams to kick the touch on the grandstand side and the grandstand here is chock -a block Williams has kicked from the middle of the field another 15 meter gain quite acceptable from in that area Daly tough young player that's come on very well since the kangaroo tour Cochran Brokenshire loses the ball for the second time in three handles that's not uh, front row forward stuff six to go out to Steve Mortimer caught gets a pass away nicely to Jarvis Jarvis trying to go through the middle he always takes a power of stopping and he can do a bit of damage with that high knee action too nothing illegal about it tucks creamed hard there by Lyons Bugden Steve Mortimer Lamb Hagen Hasler there with a little punch I thought the referee saw it too Hasler is a, a very uh, much a different uh, style of player this uh, year. He's uh, very strong on the aggro. Now he's been penalised and that will be another penalty kick to the Canterbury Bankstown side. All right, Lamb from about 15 metres in from the sideline and about eight metres out from the quarter line. He'll be aiming at that left hand upright. The breeze is across him and uh, the tendency will be for it to drift away to the right as the pace goes off the kick the kids in the background building the tent he struck that well looks good aimed it straight outside the left hand upright as the pace went off it curled it back in he could be a surveyor with a line like that so canterbury four manly nil and lamb two goals from two attempts From the kickoff now, Cochrane's going to drive it down. Smart sort of a kick. Potter takes it in his in goal. He does a 
heap of damage, this young fellow, when he gets in around the ruck area sometimes, backing up some of the big forwards. Jarvis, his handling is possibly the weakest part of his game. But uh, he hasn't put one down today. And again, they come away with uh, a gain of about 18 metres and two rucks. They go for the kick straight away. Farrows kicks right off the side of his foot. And he still finds touch. And it's a gain still of about 20 metres, but I reckon he ought to cross himself after that one. That was a pretty shoggy kick. Scrum eight metres into Manley's half. Just 10 metres in from the sideline. Hasler to feed the scrum. That looked a very, very crooked feed, really. Very, very crooked. And he said, uh, McStone, the referee, that it was done with an upward motion. Must be put in from below the knees, along the ground as the uh, accredited way to do it. So again, back come the Bulldogs with territorial advantage and possession up in Manly Territory. Steve Mortimer, Lamb, bumping it out to Hagen. He's standing deep and coming straight onto it. He's tackled on the quarter. Farrow runs from dummy half. Daly's there around the top to uh, put him down with Cochran. Bugden runs from dummy half. He scored some famous tries from this position. He very nearly got through there. Tucks, Tucks swivels, gives it back inside the Langmac. Langmac took that well under pressure. He's only about two metres out. The pressure coming in waves now for Manley. Mortimer gets a quick pass away to Tucks. Tucks running cross field. The ball was uh, lost behind him. It's picked up and flicked to Lamb. Lamb goes back into the ruck. Last tackle coming up. Mortimer will call for it. No, they're going to work it up the blind. Langmac's gone for a kick into the end goal. And it's just been hurried very hurriedly over the dead ball line by a Manly player, so that will be a line dropout to restart play. There was the kick, and you can see that it took uh, a pretty uh, great deal of agility to get that ball over the line before a Canterbury player fell on it. Langmack, very smart kick. Well, we've had 18 minutes of play. The score is 4-0, Canterbury's favour. The kick is a long drop. Tucks doesn't touch. Oh, he's offside. That was offside, no question about it. Came off a Canterbury player and rebounded to Tucks in an offside position. Frightful bit of uh, an error there on that occasion. Steve Mortimer in possession. Well, the manly section of the crowd were incensed with that. Let's be uh, a little bit uh, civil to the referee and say that he was 60 yards or 50 yards anyway downfield and may not have seen the rebound. Ball away to Jarvis, up the blind side. Daly's there to uh, swing into the ground again. Getting through a lot of work, Daly, close to the ruck. Manly player lying in an area that he could have been penalised. Steve Mortimer was on the kick. It's uh, a chase into the in-goal area, and Williams, I think he allowed it to go over the line. I, the referee is going to rule on that. No, he's ruled that it came off his leg, and uh, watch Williams now on the... Uh, State Bank replay quite definitely touched the ball in goal. So again, he couldn't really take the risk of it going over on its own. It had sort of popped up on its end. And he would have been all sorts of a fool had he allowed it, not touched it, but it stayed in the in goal area. Cochran. That's a lesser kick. It's taken by Potter. Some of the Canterbury crowd yelling to Steve uh, Peter Tunks then to get out of the way. Well, a little knock on there, and uh, that takes the pressure off slightly, but it's been coming in waves, as you mentioned earlier, Graham. They've had a lot of possession. They've had uh, the penalty count much their way, although that's going to defuse it slightly. Four points on the board. I'd probably, it's not what you'd call a great position at the moment. 
Well, I don't know. Manly Varinga have done exceptionally well. We look at the scoreboard, 20 minutes, 21 minutes gone in this first half, and virtually Manly have been defending inside their own quarter for all those 21 minutes. A great performance by them to come up and see Canterbury only just the two penalty goals on the board. Canterbury Banks down certainly are looking very, very sharp, but on the other end of the scale, as I say, defensively, Manly are hanging in there. All right, let's see how they go now. They've got the play up midway, midway between the quarter and halfway. There's Gibbs right through the middle. He's gone right up there the quarter line. Slipped and fell, but he still gets to his feet and makes another few metres. That was a very good bust there. Right through the middle. Cochran at dummy half. Fires it out to Hasler. Hasler looks on the outside for Meredith. Meredith at Vorton. Vorton standing out very wide. But a pass back into Meredith that's gone to ground. It's picked up by Canterbury, and that's an awful bit of play there. I don't quite know why Vorton was standing so wide as a back. Tucks, pops a one-handed pass to Lamb. That's that famous sort of basketball pass of his, or water polo pass, if you like. And away it goes to uh, Bugden on the open side of the ruck. He elects to stick the head down. So Manly building a, a shallow grave at the moment. It'll get deeper and deeper as they make mistakes like that. Gillespie in possession. Close to tackler. Langmack, Steve Mortimer. Lamb, long cutout pass to Hagen. Gets it out to Farrow. There's a hole for him to run into. He's straight up the sideline, goes through the tackle and taken down only about eight metres out from the Manly Moringa goal line. Last tackle coming up. Lamb's gone for the crossfield kick. This should go to a Manly player, taken by O'Connor. He's sidestepping along the dead ball line and gets into the field of play, does he? Yes, by half a metre. Well... Steve Park comes away with a diagonal run that doesn't make much ground, and the Manly forwards have only just arrived. Williams, the fullback, taking it up. There's O'Connor. Well, he has. He's running actually over the dead ball line, actually out of the end of the field. So that should have been a line dropout to restart the play. The referee had no uh, assistance there from the touch judge, obviously. Oh, Williams, God, spare me. No, he's knocked the ball down. It's gone to ground. That should be a penalty to Canterbury Banks down, in my opinion. Well, the first offence was a knock-on, but uh, Gibbs has fallen on the ball in an offside position. That's a frightful attempt. Now, you watch, there's a manly player last touched the ball, and Gibbs fell down on it there. So the referee taking the option with the first error, which was a knock-on by uh, Williams. That grave just got a fraction deeper on that occasion. There's a clean scrum win. And a back inside the Langmack from Steve Mortimer out to Potter, the fullback. He got a pass away. They're playing ducks and drakes with Manley at the moment, switching the play backwards and forwards. Hagen gets to his feet. Buckton sights the line and goes for a dive. Can't make it. Hagen at dummy half. Away to Jarvis. Jarvis turns his back and pops the pass. He's gone out to Langmack. Holds the pass up. Gets it to Lamb. Lamb puts it down. Fallen on there by Gibbs. Ten metres out from the Manly line. Cochran, a long floating pass to Michael O'Connor. Farrah's there to give him a pretty warm welcome. Gets up and plays it forward. There was no marker when he gets up over the quarter line. A little punch went in there from Prendale. For a swinging arm. Lions. Oh! Heavens above, Gillespie just ran straight into uh, our friend Gibbs there and uh, he did well not to lose the ball. The kick has gone downfield to uh, Sandy Campbell, takes it well. He's got a bit of space to move. Goes up the sideline, Ronson gets around his legs, picks him up over the halfway line. Hagen, Potter, Hagen again on the run around. Four points to nil, Canterbury lead. They've scored two penalty goals through Terry Lamb. Stephen Fokes, 10 metres into the Manly half. Gillespie at dummy half, Mortimer. Langmack changes direction, drop the ball. That'll be a scrum for the Manly feet. We've got 15 minutes to go. Mind you, there's a factor that a lot of people don't realise in this sort of condition with that temperature out there in the middle, probably about 27, 28 degrees. The perspiration gets on the ball from these players and uh, it can make it a little bit difficult to handle. The temperature in the middle of those scrums is indescribable. Well, Hassel's got it in and out. Meredith on the run around to Williams, the fullback who steps through a, a tackle. 
Lions goes to dummy half, fires it out to Vorton. Vorton elects to go straight and hard, bumps the player out of the way, loses the ball behind him. It's picked up by Lamb. No, it's fallen on, and it's six to go. It wasn't lost forward, and it's Lyons who's getting to his feet. Away to Daly. Daly tries to change direction and uh, stumbles and falls. And there's a Canterbury player now, Bugden, going to be spoken to for the attempted use of a hand or an arm or a fist in that tackle. There's Daly. Watch him come in. There it was. At the fact that it missed is uh, really inconsequential. The, the effort was there again on the State Bank replay. Referee Stone watching both sides pretty carefully in that era. From one of the rare times. They'd only been up in the Canterbury quarter once to my recollection, Graham uh, Hughes. Well, this is where it becomes frustrating for Canterbury. They've had all the run of play for some 26, 27 minutes of the first half, and it become, can become just as frustrating to the side that's had all the share of the possession. Quite often you see a try scored solely against the run of play. Well, here's Manley about 10 metres out at the moment. Hasler trying to dazzle his way through. Gets it to Vorton. Vorton a long cutout pass to O'Connor. And O'Connor weaves, throws the dummy, and came back midfield. Still turns, gets his pass away to Meredith, who's a light-stepping player. He gets a pass back into Vorton. Vorton can't do much with it. He's wrapped up. Yes, he does. He gets it away to Close. Close can't wind himself up. Tries to crawl along the ground for a few metres. Good defence by Canterbury. Cochran from dummy half. Turns, swivels. He's beaten one, two. Out there to Ronson. Ronson taken out of the play hard and strong. Now they're going to try to move it along. No, Hasler had no runners on the outside of him. Nobody apparently showing a great... Uh, willingness to run on that occasion there's a kick being picked out of the air by gillespie beautiful slip catch stuff like a bobby simpson catch about eight meters from the line there's the kick he goes down to it takes it on the second bite so canterbury off the hook at the moment and there's a player down to receive attention He's only 10 metres out from his line. The score is 4-0 in Canterbury's favour. Two penalty goals. Bugden, away to land. Hassler, the tackler, about 15 metres out. Tunks back on the inside. Potter was on the end of it. Bugden, Lamb, Mortimer, Gillespie. Back inside to Mortimer. Mortimer's up over halfway, coming to it. Gets it to Lamb. Lamb looks for support. Passes it straight to Borton. Hasn't received as good a pass as that all day. Meredith at dummy half. They move it out to Hasler. Out to Lyons. Lyons elects to straighten it up. Goes straight and hard right through. He's popped the pass nicely out there to Cochran. Cochran on the accelerate there. Comes to Hagen. Is taken down. Gets to his feet. Can't play it forward. There was no marker. Decided against that. Out to Hasler. Meredith. Midway between the... Canterbury quarter and the halfway line. Vaughton, the only player on the Manly blind side there that was in a position to receive the ball. Gives it dummy half. He's gone the blind side again and there's no, no uh, support there. The kick ricochets, goes to Cochrane, play on, so it's out to Vaughton. Vaughton now to Meredith. Meredith gives it to Williams. Williams drops it and Bugden comes up with it, I believe, for... No, it's not Bugden, it's Langmack. Comes up with it. That might have been kicked through. The referee says not. Potter, Mortimer, Farrah, Gibbs in over the top there with a spectacular tackle that makes the uh, referee come hastening in, Steve Mortimer holds the pass up, gets it to Lamb, looks like there might be something on the end of this Lamb, back on the inside to Frendo, Frendo's beaten one, two, and he's tackled, is that a double movement or is he tackled in the field of play? He's just short, Manly in disarray at the moment. There's a long floating pass gone out to Bugden and he's wrapped up hard by Lyons and really backslammed. He's uh, up to his feet, he's a tough character, Manly short of players on this side, it's gone out to Gillespie. Gillespie can't get a pass away and that's the last tackle and it's a handover. Well, I've got to say Manly, we're lucky to get out of that. That was a very strong destructive tackle by Lyons on Bugden that slowed the play right down. Lyons now coming up with another run. And taking play out to the quarter, Canterbury a little bit slow to respond. Away to Brokenshire, Brokenshire runs into all sorts of trouble on the edge of the Canterbury ruck. Lang back there with uh, Jarvis, another penalty to Manley. That penalty count at this stage. Just 
Just looking at it. Six to five in favour of the Canterbury Bankstown side. So there's been a big uh, catch up there from Manly's point of view. At one stage it was four to one. Well, really, if Manly can uh, play, frankly, as badly as they have in some areas of losing the ball and still only be four points down to Canterbury, they've got to be in this game still with some sort of a uh, some sort of a chance. <laughs> An old footballing mate of mine there, Bernie Seymour, who played a lot of first-grade football for Manly back in the late 50s and 60s and is a selector of the club, just caught that, took a, a rousing cheer from the, uh, the crowd, that kick over the sideline. Steve Park running into trouble. Cochran, Hasler, trying to accelerate his way. He's an, an astonishingly gifted athlete, this fella. Very, very fast player, Cochran. Manly players are not looking to run with the ball. Cochran had a look there. There wasn't a player on the blind side wanted to run with it. Vorton, away to Hasler. Out to Meredith. Meredith's gone for the kick downfield. It's a straight up giveaway to the Canterbury side. Mortimer cleans it up. Gets it out to Sandy Campbell. Campbell goes upfield. He's picked off by O'Connor. Running from dummy half is Hagen. But very close to losing that. The referee races in and says it's six to go. O'Connor being told to let go. Gillespie. The ball being carried precariously on the top of his chest there. He went close to losing that in that daily tackle. 4-0, Canterbury lead. Mortimer. Langman. Canterbury player Jarvis there falling over a, a prone body. Mortimer, a lovely pass out there to Folks. He's tackled midway between the Manly quarter and halfway. About eight and a half minutes to go to the halftime break. Tunks. Got a one-handed pass away. That wasn't the uh, where he intended it to go. It's fallen on by Manley. Gibbs was able to get to it. Morton. Oh dear, oh dear. Graham Hughes, they're not running onto the ball at all. Well, Manly Moringa have had to soak up an enormous amount of pressure. Their forwards are very, very tired. They've still got eight minutes to go before the half-time break. They're starting to come up with errors. Canterbury slowly but surely starting to find a lot more breaks. Look for a lot of running from dummy half. Steve Morton's man. Steve Mortimer, Jarvis, Langmack, Gillespie. Needed broken shear and uh, close there to slow his progress. He was really travelling. Bugden, Mortimer out there like a traffic cop at the moment, waving his arms and telling the players where to go. Potter, Bugden, again, good strong defence from Hasler. The ball's been lost in the tackle. So that will be a scrum, one thinks, to restart the play. The State Bank replay will show that it wasn't stolen from him. Yes, it was actually. Hasler punched it out of his hands. A very cute bit of work there. Shielding the ball from the referee's gaze with his own body. He just gently tapped the ball out of Bugden's hands. Well, they come up with a scrum win. Steve Mortimer's gone for the kick downfield. The referee won't rule on that as a penalty. Yes, he will. He considers that Steve Mortimer was sheltered out of the way. Watch the State Bank replay and see what you think. Does a player have to get out of the way? Well, he got a bit of a flint push in the uh, face with an arm there from Williams, which is what uh, Stone was on about. A very good example for young goal kickers. Potential goal kickers is Lamb. Very meticulous and careful. Strikes the ball always well. That on that occasion was just away to the right. Gibbs gets into the field of play. Did very well. Michael O'Connor runs from dummy half. Toughs it up about another eight metres. Young Park runs sideways. I had the ball actually stolen from him there. That's Jarvis going on beyond the point where the referee says tackle. What spectators can't hear is the referee calling to the players saying at a certain point a tackle has been effected. At that point you've got to drop off. That's five and a half, maybe five minutes to go to the half time break. And we're spinning it out wide at the moment, out to Meredith on a close. Close to late inclusion of the team when Shearer dropped out with a hamstring strain. 
Hasler. Michael O'Connor, the kick over the top. The race for the ball. Campbell's got to it first. He's taken down by O'Connor, then back slam by Ronson. Canterbury moving it out to Potter. Potter decked in a strong tackle by two of the Manly forwards. O'Connor down receiving treatment on a knee at the moment. Here's Steve Mortimer looking. Well, he's just overrun his supports or, put another way, they've overrun him, but he had nobody to pass to. On a tux. Beautiful tackle right around the boots by Lyons. Bugden pumps it out to Jarvis. Jarvis through the middle. Gets to the quarter line. Manley's end. Last tackle coming up. It's away to Lamb. Lamb goes to the drop goal. It's a ricochet. This goes to Williams in the in goal area. He straightens it up. And is effectively tackled by Parra. Meredith, the 5'8", running from dummy half. He's still inside the Manly quarter. Well, that ball was interfered with by a Canterbury player lying down at the ruck there. Seen penali penal players penalised for that. Vorton. Works played 10 metres outside the quarter. Cochran runs from dummy half. Sights a bit of a gap, goes strongly. He's had uh, Martin Meredith on the outside of him there, but they couldn't link Gibbs. Hasler kicks for position. It's going to go back for a position to be fielded by Sandy Campbell. The left winger, he brings it back to the quarter. Four points to nil. Two goals from three attempts to Terry Lamb. Jarvis being upended midfield. Bugden. Steve Mortimer, Andrew Farrer, Steve Mortimer, sights a gap, loses the ball in the tackle, came to him from the, Vorton was the tackler, came from behind and was able to sort of loosen the ball on his grasp, there's Vorton coming in and his arms came down and knocked the ball through uh, Mortimer's arms, right at the halfway line, they'll clear this one up, about two minutes to go to the half time break. Manly scrum win. Meredith works the blind side. Evades one tackle. Makes a gain of about eight metres. Manly look desperately tired at the moment. Vorton onto Close. Close is a player that needs to stand as deep as he was then. He's uh, essentially an on the burst runner. Lyons. Cochran again. Looking for support. That's a pretty ordinary pass. It's gone to Michael O'Connor. He knocked it backwards. By on, says the referee. And now they drive him back towards the halfway line. Pretty ordinary passing there. Hasler. Runs right through the middle of the ruck. Looks for support. Pivots back into Vorton. Vorton has nobody to pass to. Yes, he does. He's brushed one tackle. Got a pass away much too late. Close was there. The ball's gone to ground. Mortimer has it. I think Mortimer was pretty happy to take a tackle there. There's a replay, and it just shows the uh, late change there by, by Vorton. He was actually standing still, suddenly decided he'd go, and he made a good inroad, but that late pass was never going to be taken by Close. It was only shin high. Vorton talking to uh, Daly there, telling him to move up into the dummy half position. Steve Mortimer slowly to his feet. Time almost up in the first half. Bugden runs a metre or so. Daly the defender. Gillespie. He pushes Gibbs off easily. He's busted two tackles. Got to go in low on this fella. You don't go in around the chest and shoulders of an enormously powerful young fella like him. There's a good tackle from Gibbs right round Lamb's thighs and drove him sideways. Bugden. Tucks, hops through one tackle. There's the hooter in the background, and I suggest to you that uh, at the half-time break, with a scoreline, Canterbury four, two goals from three attempts to Terry Lamb, Manly nil, that there are 26 players coming from the field who are very happy to be going into the shade and having a look at the uh, the inside of the dressing room with a few drinks, etc. So that's it at half-time break. Uh, we'll be back shortly with uh, what we hope will produce some tries for the second half of this quite interesting game with two big strong sides going around.
for the Canterbury Bankstown side, Graham Hughes. Yes, no changes to either side player-wise, but uh, there's only Terry Lamb, Steve Mortimer and Michael Hagan that haven't changed their jumpers from the first half. The complaint being that it was so hot and the jumpers were so wet, that's why they were coming up with a lot of spilled ball, that uh, when being tackled, the ball was just popping out. OK, just a question on the wind. Is it favouring Canterbury or is it still blowing straight across field here? Well, it's coming across field, but it does tend to, uh, if anything, maybe favour Manly just a fraction. OK, the kickoff goes straight to Williams. I'd like to see Williams just iron himself up a little bit with these uh, runs of his to bring the ball back. He's a big strapping fella. Uh, he seems to take the first tackle fairly easily. Uh, anyway, easy to sit here in a commentary position and be critical with the temperature out there about 27 or 28 degrees. Away to Vaughton Manly. Just up near their quarter, a long cutout pass to O'Connor. Beautiful quick hands out there to Park. He's got it way on the inside for Vaughton. Vaughton swings it out to Hasler. Hasler sights a little opening, tries to go through it. It closes. Gillespie was the man that closed it. Away to Daly. Good pump up through the edge of the ruck. Turned his back, looked to give the pass. Very slowly to his feet. Cochran runs from dummy half, kicks ahead. Chase for the ball, the ball lying free. And as far as I'm concerned, Farrow's in an offside position fell off that. But, uh, let's have a look at a replay if we can on that one. It appeared to me that the ball came off the State Bank replay. There's the kick through by Cochran. There's the contest with the ball here at this stage. There's the ball touched by... Well, it came off the legs of a Manly player last, but uh, just prior to that it was into uh, a Canterbury player. So quite right ruling there by Mick Stone. But as a result of that... Uh, Sloppy bit of play. We've had a scrum go down. About five metres from the halfway line. It's a Hasler feed for Manley. He gets it into the referee's satisfaction. Mid oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Martin Meredith just dropped the football there. It's swept on by Farrah. He'll get up and he could have played it forward. Now Terry Lamb started to trudge forward. He gets it up to the quarter. Manley spilling the ball on the first and second tackle. And the story of the first half statistically, with Tunks running on the blind side of the ruck, the scrums went to Manly 4-3. Now Canterbury come with a long cutout pass that evaded uh, Potter and uh, Steve Mortimer was trying to pump it up. He had nobody to go with him. The crowd give him a bit of a cane there. Langmack, the dummy, holds a pass up, can't get it away. Now it's fallen on. It's been knocked back in the air and the referee says it's double knock-ons. The penalties went to, uh, that was a very messy bit of play there, as you can see, out of character bit of football there. The ball actually been kicked by a player lying on the ground. That was a, a funny one. But nonetheless, the uh, the scrum goes down, and again, it's a Hasler feed. Penalties went 7-6 to Manly. There was one against the feed in the in the scrums, that 4-3 uh, tally. Possession held, and this is probably... Uh, a little bit of an indictment of Canterbury's attack, or do we compliment the Manly defence because possession held, Canterbury had it for 86 times as opposed to Manly's 59. As a result of that massive amount of possession, of course, one would expect a certain uh, number of tries to have been scored. That hasn't been the case. The missed tackles, 12 to Canterbury, 8 to Manly. Handling error is 9 all. That's quite low for such a uh, yeah, difficult day to play the game on with the heat and Canterbury have kicked the ball ten times in general play Manly eight Manly about 12 metres from the halfway line on a daily he's hit very very hard there just taken right out of the play given no opportunity as Jarvis just wrapped him up and there's the tackle what a crunch Gibbs Borden Hasler Meredith O'Connor O'Connor sights an opening tries to go through it but the the fence was very adequate to the task there. I think he's stolen the ball from Michael O'Connor. Again, they lose it on the first tack second tackle. Tucks. Steve Bordemann, Jarvis, tearing his way forward. And a little bit of 4-1-2 for overacting on that case. Uh, that way, uh, Pat, seeking for the penalty to be given his way. Bugged it. Steve Bordemann. Tunks switches it back to Mortimer. Old Western Suburbs move out to Lamb. Lamb goes right through the middle, looks for support. He's got Potter. There's the first try of the match to Hagen. Michael Hagen in for a try. Beautifully uh, work move. Worth a, a good long scrutiny on the uh, State Bank replay. 
That's a move that Western Suburbs uh, well perfected as far as I'm concerned a number of years ago and it's been a traditional move with them. The play went out one side and switched back across the ruck. Lamb was able to ease his way through the middle, got a pass then onto Potter. Potter got it to Hagen backing up and that's a try. We'll see it from another angle. The critical pass of course came when Steve, uh, when Tux was able to reverse the play to Steve Mortimer. There's Lamb coming inside the tackle of Lions or the non-event of a tackle. And there was Hagen on the back up on the inside. Graham Hughes, well worked try. It was superbly worked by Canterbury. This this try was a result purely and simply a, a result of the first 40 minutes of football. The manly forwards are a very, very tired bunch. The danger period for them was always going to be the first 10 or 15 minutes. Canterbury have got the break to go on and win this match. The manly forwards, I'll be looking for quite a few replacements midway through this uh, second half. Well, if you had a look at the manly reserve grade pack, I don't think you'd be too sanguine about bringing terribly many of them up to first grade. But that's Manley's problem. Here is Lamb with the attempted conversion. Kicked the ground a little bit, but it's nonetheless, it's over. So that uh, score has hastened on to a very respectable one after only five minutes of the second half. Canterbury 10, Manley 0. Well, they've got it all to do, and it can't be done from their own quarter. Manley have got to be able to command some possession, retain some possession. On the occasion they kick, they've got to put Canterbury under pressure and they've got to try to play the game down in Canterbury's area. It's some tall order, believe you me. Well, that's a, not a bad start to proceedings with a, a kick off from the line to restart play after Canterbury rather sloppily allowed that ball to go deep. Potter tried to stop it and then it went through, uh, I think it was um, Hagen's hands out there. Anyway, Farrow's going to come up with the line drop out to relieve he's usually good for something in the order of 40 45 meters well it's not a great kick michael o'connor allowed it to bounce it did get to halfway williams i get the impression that williams sometimes slows down to take the tackle graham hughes well, it's a very, very tough forward pack, and they've come up with some enormous hits this Canterbury side. This is one man that's played outstanding football. They've been in a lot more trouble without Paul Wharton, and a big performance in the first half from Des Hasler. OK, Manly in possession on the Canterbury quarter. Ronson, Hasler, Meredith. Tries to straighten the attack. He's still tackled about five metres away from the quarter. Gibbs, way to Brokenshire. Sets himself, that's a good strong charge up the blind side of the ruck. About 18 metres out from Canterbury's line. Lyons, Hasler, Meredith. Evades two defenders, there's a little kick through. Was he taken out of the play? The referee will rule on that. He's going to rule on it, it's a penalty to Manley. Yes, he says that there was a quite definite uh, interference with uh, him after he made this evasive run. A little kick, and there it was. Not uh, dissimilar, the Lamb and the Cochrane style. They both go back very slowly. 172 points in 1986 he was responsible for. Strikes that. Strikes that well. It's out of the ground. It's two points to Manly and they come on the board. Ten points to two. Drive it deep. Kick the sand a little bit there on that occasion, taken by Williams. Just watch him as he runs and see, does he slow down to take the tackle? No, he seemed to try to hurdle through that one. Got a pass away, it's gone to ground. Canterbury come up with it. That's gone to ground. It's play on, says the referee. No, there's half a dozen knock-ons there. Yes, the referee's quite right. He swung his arm. <laughs> Mick Stone looked like a pendulum. And there were so many knock-ons as we watch it on the State Bank replay. But I don't know whether he was sending the action up, but he uh, swung his arms left, right, left, right, left, right, indicating three knock-ons either way. And that uh, seemed like a bit of harassment round the side there, but Manley come up with the ball, lines at dummy half, away to Borton, he tries to straighten it up. Buddy Borton doing quite well, backing for, uh, about five yards, still going up. Cochran running from dummy half, I've no doubt in the wide world he's been told to have a go from dummy half by by his coach, Bob Fulton. Lions running right on the halfway line. Cochrane, Brokenshire. Gillespie uh, 
tried to take him head on there and broken chair came out of that to encounter the better Hasler Meredith oh the kick's been charged down it'll go back to Hasler Play, uh, six to go says the referee Hasler scoots out of one tackle goes out of another one running around ever diminishing circles and finally the Terry Lamb that comes back at him from behind Lamb was the first player he beat, but he ran back towards him. Chris Close, around one man. Just the pass, nightly out the park. Park comes inside, steps two men. Accelerating. It's a good run from the young fella. He takes play eight metres into the Canterbury half. Close at dummy half. Out to Hasler. Hasler to Lyons. Lyons looking for support. Gets a pass on the inside. Got it nicely to Williams. Williams is looking for support on the outside. Throws a long floating pass out to Ronson. Ronson back on the inside to O'Connor. Got a pass to Vorton. The referee says it was lost forward. A manly let uh, Canterbury off the hook there. They had them spread open. But the pass has gone to ground and Canterbury have come up with it. And they take play across field from their quarter. Steve Mortimer was... Uh, a player there that was involved in the defence at the end of that bit of action by Manley, Andrew Farron. There's Steve, uh, oh, Peter Tunks rather. And now he's a dummy half and then on to Langmack. He comes through a strong tackle by Daly and still manages to trundle on to the halfway line. He might take a bit of time over that one, Langmack. There's the uh, tackle coming in. Well, Langmack uh, taking plenty of time over this injury. He's up and uh, a little bit tentative on that left leg. Hugged him back in his usual <coughs> dummy half roll. To Lamb. Lamb kicks downfield. This should go down Williams' throat. It does. He runs straight into one of the players there and ricocheted from him. Got a pass to Vorton. Vorton sets sail. Gets it out to Michael O'Connor. O'Connor comes back on the infield trying to weave his way through the middle. I thought his best option was up the sideline there. I thought he went back in where all the heavy uh, defence was. Lyons throws a dummy. Goes cartwheeling through the middle. Terry Lamb tackle to put him down. Vorton picked off beautifully. Lovely tackle by little Steve Mortimer right round the boot tops. Hasler. Meredith. Michael O'Connor. Back on the inside to, uh, to Meredith. Meredith available to swing his way out of several tackles. Gibbs fires it out to Brokenshire. Brokenshire looks for support. Gets it to close. Close out the park. Parks up the sideline. Comes midfield. Should be a try. Oh, close has put it down. Oh dear, oh dear. His handling at times has been, uh, in his career with Manly Warringah, has been a, uh, a bit of a bone of contention. There was the opportunity of a try here had he taken that pass. There was defence around. I'm not suggesting it was a lay down was there, but certainly he would have gone reasonably close to scoring a try. They probably won't come as close as that again without scoring. Scrum win to Canterbury. Out to Potter, standing as a 5'8". He's had for him a quiet day. He's not been involved as much in the backing up that he usually does. Lamb, away to Jarvis. Needs a retread. I think his uh, feet just gave out from underneath him there. Tucks. Back come the remorseless Canterbury forwards. Mordor. Out to Lamb. He's gone for the diagonal kick for touch. It won't find touch or will it? It's going to be fielded by Park. He's done very well, evaded two defenders, got to within a metre of the quarter line, where he's picked off. Williams at dummy half. Stands in a tackle. Brogan share. That's a good run from the uh, inexperienced Sydney prop. Cochran running on the swivel. Got a pass out to Lyons. And some sign of a change coming there, Graham Hughes. Yes, Steve Folks was the man that was injured in the first half, a badly corked thigh muscle, and on the sideline in 22 was uh, David Boyd. David Boyd in 22. OK, that kick was a 
evasive one. It got it away from uh, Potter, and he's been able to feel it and get the pass then on to Sandy Campbell. Steve Morton. Hagen coming with a good strong burst, standing very deep and pushing himself through the manly defence. Now Mortimer's on the scurry. Exciting little player. Bugged it. Lang Mack throws the dummy. Two metres from the halfway line. Ten points to two, Canterbury. They've scored a try after a well-worked move. Hagen was the man that put the ball over the line. Lamb came up with a conversion. And a couple of penalties for that same player. Ten points to two. Haswell running from dummy half from the scrum and he's got himself right through. That's an uncharacteristic sort of a run from a man playing opposite Steve Mortimer. That should have been a penalty and it was. Lashing out the play of the ball, Langmack. Couldn't wait for the ball to get on the ground. The rules are pretty specific about that. There's a fine kick being put in there and it's taken play up to within 10 metres now of the... Uh, yes, 10, 12 metres of the Canterbury line. Brokerage here comes straight and hard on the burst. He's to within five metres. Now, can Manley sustain a bit of pressure or do they lose the ball on the second or third tackle? Very slowly to his feet, out to Lyons, Lyons, dummies, weaves, tries to wrong foot the opposition. Hasler, tries his spring heel running, he's run again, seems to bounce off to defenders. Vaughton a dummy half, he swivels, gets a pass back on the inside to Close, Close trying in a, a set move there, that's more of a Benny Elias, Gary uh, Jack move at... Uh, Balmain, that one, it didn't come off. Lyons, dummy, straight and last tackle. Well, they've sustained pressure. There's Cochran. Cochran kicks, it's picked out of the air beautifully then again. I think uh, Gillespie was the man. That's the second time he's pulled off a reflex catch. Graham Hughes, Manley's made a change. David Ronson has left the field and out in 15 on the right wing for Manly is Jeremy Ticehurst and the crowd at Belmore, 14 and a half foul. All right. Jeremy Ticehurst. 14 and a half thousand people here at uh, Belmore. Well, you were very close. You said 14,000. Okay, we've got uh, Canterbury still in possession on the last tackle. They go back for the kick. Steve Waterman punches it downfield. Williams takes it. Five metres from halfway. He's able to run it up, uh, goes careering through a tackle. Gillespie was the man that tried to sort of shoulder charge him there. Gordon floats a pass out to Close. Close elects to go upfield, straight ahead. Manly player, I think it's Lyons down there at the moment, or is it Meredith? Lyons receiving treatment. On the halfway line, 10 points to two, Canterbury lead. Only one try in the match. Gibbs worries his way through the middle of the ruck, still going. It's a strong run, about 15 metres. Steve Mortimer to be penalised. And Steve's been around long enough to know that even when the referees are wrong, they're right. Although he is the captain, he's entitled to ask, of course. There's a cross breeze. He'll need to aim it, perhaps, at the left-hand upright. As the kids start the banging on the tent. There they are. The little ankle biters. Cochran's kick is away to the right. Just uh, indicating the strength of that breeze up round uh, goalpost height. So the score remains as it was, Canterbury 10, Manly Warringah 2. Quarter line drop out to restart, the ball was kicked dead, Farrah. Punches it downfield, Williams feels it back near his quarter. He's trying to get up towards the halfway line, he's got to within 7 metres of it. 
Michael O'Connor runs from dummy half. Good strong burst, and he's made about another seven metres from there. Broken chair coming flat and hard. Boyd and uh, Jarvis were there to meet him and greet him. Vaughton steps. Tackle on the halfway line. Had a very busy game, Vaughton. Daly. The last tackle coming up now for Manley. And to Hasler. To Lyons. It's a pass back on the inside to Hasler. Hasler evades one defender. Can't evade two. Gets it to Vaughton. Vaughton's kicked. It's going to go down Potter's throat. Opportunity for the young fullback to bring it back. He's made a good inroad here. Brings it back 10 metres outside his quarter. Sandy Campbell. Oh, very close to getting through. Crowd give him a round of applause for that run. Bugden. Steve Mortimer. Hagen. Lamb can't handle it. Puts it down and that will be a scrum. Ten points to two. We're into the last quarter, as it were. The dying 20 minutes. 17 or 18 minutes to go. Oh, that was a terrible feat, Des Hasler, really. Just look at that scrum again. The ball just dropped off the, off the tip of his fingers. It wasn't a feat at all. The State Bank replay, watch it. Just lets it dribble off his hands, look. Terrible. Andrew Farrah, let's see what you can do up the sideline there. Let's see what the gain will be. It's about eight metres inside his own half to ten metres. So it's about an 18 metre gain. Tux. Bugden. He must be pumping it up. He's got up to the quarter line. Had a, a strong, tough game as Gillespie. Is Jarvis losing the ball. That's the first time he's dropped it today, though, to his credit. And I think uh, Graham Hughes, uh, Jarvis, is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is a big, powerful, strong man, unremitting runner, but uh, one of his great weaknesses has been pretty ordinary handling through his career. Well, Pat Jarvis's first game in the top, uh, top grade in 1987, and he had a very, very strong first half. He's having a good game, and he certainly needs one because in the reserve grade today, Paul Dunn was outstanding for Canterbury. Referee having a lot of trouble with this scrum. Steve Bordemann comes up with it. Ducks under a tackle from Lyons. He's still going. Now Canterbury in a strong attacking position. Gillespie running crossfield. He's unseated two of them. Goes strong and hard. The crowd love that. That's Robbo. Steady. Steady. <laughs> Well, he was so pumped up with adrenaline on that occasion that uh, he was uh, not quite happy to take the referee's decision that uh, he was in error. And uh, I thought he was going to bang the ball down, which would have, uh, of course, uh, could, of course, have given him another 10 yards walk. Williams. He's found the line on the corner. to Bruggenshire and he's strong again this uh, young player from the the country Gibbs had a fairly quiet day certainly not been uh, in involved in any aggro Hasler Vaughton arguably the most involved uh, of the Manly players today Hasler Williams kick going well towards the sideline is a beautiful kick from his own quarter to the opposition quarter a splendid gain of about 50 meters another change to the manly side well we've just gone midway through the second half glenn ryan in 24 is about to take the field for phil daly glenn ryan who uh, had surgery on a uh, pulled groin muscle in adelaide and uh, 
I believe, is captain of the reserve grade side at Manly. He was involved in a try that they scored today. Yes, Ryan was the captain of the reserve grade. Ryan straight away involved in defence with broken shear there. Jarvis is the man. Canterbury, midway between the quarter, their end and the halfway. Leading by 10 points to two, about 12 minutes to go. Desperation time for Manly. Kick downfield, finds Williams a little bit to the left. He feels it one-handed. There's four Canterbury defenders there. He's looking for support. He does very well not to do anything, just to take the tackle. That was, situation was fraught with danger. Park runs from dummy half. The young constable gets unseated there, about seven metres from his quarter line. Michael O'Connor running from dummy half. Cochran on the Lions. Lions looks for support, can't do it. He had the ball under one arm. Meredith, Vorton. One-handed pass to Lyons. Last tackle coming up. Cochran. Throws the dummy. Back on the inside to Ryan. Ryan tried to kick it. It miscued. Very nearly missed the ball entirely. Was taken on the full by Tux. So Canterbury back in possession. Just their own side of halfway. Steve Mortimer. Dreadful attempt at a kick. There's Potter. Potter running, a gain of about eight metres. Just starting to unleash himself there. The Tunks pushed one of the Manly players right out of the way. Away goes Potter on the blind side, gets it on to Lamb. He's tackled five metres short of the Manly quarter. Last tackle coming up. What are the tactics? They go to the blind side. Langback throws a pass out there to Campbell. He's over the sideline. It will be a scrum. Friendo there, not Campbell. Another replacement there, Graham Hiss. Paul Dunn has moved to the sideline in 24. He came rushing out from the tunnel. We don't have any information uh, on who uh, is to come off. Paul Dunn... Uh, did some marvellous things in the reserve grade game with uh, ball distribution. They lost the game, but uh, it was not as full of his one wouldn't have thought. Oh, well taken there. Sandy Campbell, beautifully judged, almost like a Statue of Liberty player there, caught the ball virtually on the tips of one hand. Out to Mortimer. Farrah right through to the quarter, steps inside Hasler, gets the pass to Mortimer and Mortimer's in for the try beautiful stuff from Canterbury, they open Manly right up Steve Mortimer on the back up but uh, Andrew Farrer was the man who created the try and here's the action from the low level camera on the state back replay, that was the Mortimer pass onto Farrer, the little stutter with the legs the change of direction. Watch him come inside Hasler now off the left foot. There it is. Beautiful straightening and then selectively out to Steve Mortimer who hit the pass, travelling at a rate of knots. And that's a very good try. Again, from the high-level camera, Steve Mortimer initiated the move. Out to Farrah. Farrah goes right through the defence there. There's a defence of Hasler. And there comes the pass to Mortimer. And it's right underneath the post. Andrew Farrer, who's been one of Canterbury's very, very good players today. Steve Mortimer coming up with a try. Terry Lamb to attempt the conversion from right in front. It's 14 points to two. Still plenty of time in this match for a lot more points to be scored. Sixteen points to two. Terry Lamb comes up with another conversion attempt, which is successful. Steve Mortimer, the try. Well, we had, uh, I think, Tucks leaving the field on that occasion, so the referee, uh, the, the uh, coach, 
of the Canterbury side must be pretty sanguine about his team's chances with 10 minutes to go. You've got uh, Peter Tux there, Graham Hughes. Thanks, Rex. Peter, any uh, major problems with an injury? No, 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 Graham. It's pretty hot out there and it's going to be tight, so Warren get Paul will run. Man of the Ringer, a hard side to crack. You had so much possession in the first 40 minutes. Yeah, they're a really good side now. They haven't been beaten in the competition proper so far. So it's, uh... and hold it, just a moment. We've got Hagen being put through with a one-handed pass. He's made a good inroad, looking for support on the outside. Farrow arrived just a fraction late, but Manly in disarray. Six to go. Ball played forward. Up he gets. Moves it out to Bugden. Bugden on and done. Dunn trying to uh, light step his way through the defence there. They're up to the Manly quarter. Bugden, Langmack back on the inside there to Dunn, uh, to David Boyd once again. They're only 18 metres out from Manly's line and putting the screws, turning the screws harder and harder. There's uh, Jarvis getting a pass away. It's on the ground. Out to Steve Mortimer. He can't scurry through. We'll just wait till this uh, section of tackles goes through and we'll come back to... Uh, Tuxi, there's Lamb kicking for a field goal. It's wide and away. So back to you, uh, Graham. Peter, it probably just underlines uh, how much and in, how important it was to win. You just can't afford to put two losses together. Yeah, well, uh, we sort of only had ourselves to blame last week, and this week we've uh, improved. We just did the, made the most of our chances today and just gradually wore Manly down, I think. Well, what else, any, any other factors being the difference? Steve Mortimer back in action? Yeah, he's really had a good game today, Steve. I think we missed him last week. He's uh, leadership as well. And uh, I think he's been our best player out there today. OK, Peter Tunks. OK, well, we're back with the action with Canterbury still in possession about 10 metres. Manly side of halfway. Gillespie's there. Lyons and he just had a slight disagreement. There's a run put in from dummy half from, uh, I think that's uh, Friendo. Now it's out to Mortimer. Mortimer looks for Jarvis. Jarvis goes over the top of the defending player there, Lyons. Mortimer directing traffic. Out to Langmack. Nice pass on to Farrah. Farrah's up the middle of the ruck. Goes through. Gets the pass away nicely. And uh, Bugden's there screeching for him to get to his feet. It'll be a play the ball penalty. It was uh, David Boyd being held down there. And it's going to be the penalty directly underneath the goalposts. Steve Mortimer coming up to ensure that there was no quick tap taken. He wants as many points as he can. Lamb. Kick the sand again, but nonetheless, it's been another two-pointer. 18 points to two. And only about five minutes to go. off now Cochrane drives it deep it's taken by Lamb he was looking for somebody to give it to now he offloads nicely to Andrew Farrah who's been a damaging player busts one more tackle and takes it over the quarter line Langnack shoots it out to Dunn on the blind side of the ruck he goes 10 meters beyond the quarter line bugged him Gillespie no marker, he's slowly to his feet. Rockenshire gets there in front of him. He's taken a bit of a knock, Mortimer. David uh, Boyd there, trying to swing those arms free. Hagen. And again, it's Boyd pushing players out of the way to get to the ball. Right on the halfway line. Bugden, Lamb, got a pass away to Mortimer. Williams feels it inside his quarter. There's Ticehurst, the replacement for Ronson on the right wing for Manley. Cochrane. Hasler, close. Swinging it wide. Lions cut out pass out to Michael O'Connor. The dummy slips and falls. Lions. Last tackle coming up. Manley really going nowhere through this defence. Back to Williams. Williams kick. Uh, it's going to be an awkward one for Friendo because he had the sun directly in his eyes there. 
He's avoided one tackle of Young Parks. Stepped right inside him, brings the ball back towards the halfway line. Farrah on the run around with Potter. Enormously powerful player, Andrew Farrah. Mortimer firing that pass out to Dunn, who's picked off around the legs by Lyons. Just over the halfway line. Lamb runs from dummy half. Avoids one tackle. 18 points to two. Belmore Oval, 14,500 people originally have made up their mind that uh, Manly have been shot to ribbons in this game. They tried hard. There's no suggestion of any turning up the toes, but they just didn't uh, have the firepower. The kick is... Uh, seen Darrell Williams have to scoop it up on his own goal line and bring it out about 10 metres back in a dummy half players just going through the motions right now lines up over the quarter line Hasler he evades one tackle Eventually, Bugden is able to uh, put him off. Close runs from dummy half. Paul Dunn was the tackler on uh, close. Now they swing it wide out to Hasler. Vorton, Lyons swivels through a tackle, gets it nicely out to Michael O'Connor. O'Connor up over the halfway, weaves his way back in field, gets a pass beautifully to Lyons. It'll be play on, the referee will play play on. It's picked up by Ticehurst, and Manley are in for the try. So better late than never. Manley come up with a try at the end of the match. 16 points to six. The referee right beside the play ruled that that last pass was not forward or backwards, whichever point of view you want to make. But it was knocked by a Canterbury player, so he waved play on. Six to go. Lyons initiated it by that swivel back there. He was able to put O'Connor into the clear. Now watch the clever pass O'Connor delivers back on the inside. He does the full swivel and then turns the ball beautifully back to Lyons. Lyons tried to get it over the top, but it was interfered with by Terry Lamb. He waited until the ball had just about slowed down before he picked it up and put the ball over the line for a good try. Cochran from the sideline. Well and truly into injury time. He struck that well. It's coming around. It's coming around, but not quite enough. Beautifully judged kick, really. And the wind just didn't blow strongly enough. So that is the hooter. And at full time, worthy winners have been the Canterbury Bankstown side by 18 points to six. They scored two tries to one. The uh, tries in the uh, Canterbury Bankstown side went to Steve Mortimer and Michael Hagan. And uh, Terry Lamb came up with five goals. And for the Manly side, it's been a try and a goal. A try coming to Ticehurst 30 seconds ago and one goal to Malcolm.